Hello, welcome to Today in History. My name is Sotonye Afiesema. If you are visiting for the first time, thanks for dropping by. Um, all I talk about here is events that took place on this day in history. So if you have been here before, thanks for coming back. Um, I appreciate your support. Do not forget to like if you haven't liked this video or any of my videos. And also give me a click the notification bell um, so that you receive updates of my video uploads. So let's get cracking. Let us roll back the blind in our usual tradition to the year 1904. So we're not going that far back a century, nearly a century and a quarter ago, 121 years ago on this day, Bethune Cookman College opened in Daytona Beach, Florida. So a little bit about this college, which incidentally is now a university. So Mary McLeod Bethune, PhD, founded the Daytona Educational and Industrial Training School for Negro Girls in 1904. So on this day, in 1904. Initially, the first students met in the home of John Henry and Alice Smith Williams. The school underwent several stages of growth and development through the years. In 1923, it merged with Cookman Institute of Jacksonville, Florida. So who was Mary Jane McLeod Bethune? She was born on the 10th of July, 1875, and died on the 18th of May, 1955, at the age of 80, or nearly 80. She was an American educator, stateswoman, philanthropist, humanitarian, womanist, and civil rights activist. She was president of the college from 1923 to 1942, understandably, because um, she basically founded the college, and then from 1946 to 1947. She was one of the few women in the world to serve as a college president at that time. So that's a bit of uh, Mary Jane McLeod Bethune. There's a lot more information on Wikipedia, but here is a picture of Mary Jane McLeod Bethune, who started this college for girls in 1904. Okay, for African-American girls specifically. It's now open to all races, obviously, because it, it's going to be illegal to have a school just for um, African-Americans to exclude other people, uh, people of other races. Okay, um, let's now move on to find out who the cook man person is. So, obviously, it isn't just... Um, Dr. Bethune who was involved in the amalgamation or the joining of these colleges, um, Bethune Cookman College. There is also um, a man called Reverend Alfred Cookman. I'll tell you a bit about him. And then there's also um, Reverend S.B. Darnell. So launched on the 26th of February, 1872, Cookman Institute was an early forerunner of the historically black colleges and universities. Reverend S.B. Daniel, unfortunately, couldn't find any picture of him um, online. He founded Cookman Institute in Jacksonville, Florida. It was named after Reverend Alfred Cookman, who is pictured right here, who was a Methodist minister. Reverend Cookman donated funds toward construction of the new building. Cookman Institute was closely affiliated with Clark University. It was the first educational institution for African Americans in Florida and remained so for quite some time. In operation for close to 50 years, Cookman Institute touched the lives of thousands of students. Many of Cookman's first students were ex-slaves. So there is a strong suspicion that obviously uh, Reverend Alfred Cookman uh, was uh, an, uh, an abolitionist. So I'm going to read a little bit about him. There isn't much about him on the internet. So but Reverend Alfred Cookman was born in England on the 21st of October, 1800, and later emigrated to the United States with his parents. 
He was an abolitionist who supported the civil rights of the colored race. So the civil rights of the colored race in quotes, because that was um, picked out from his book. So he obviously was an abolitionist, a quiet one, I guess. He wasn't one of the um, the more um, loudly spoken abolitionists, like William Wilberforce, for instance. You know, he didn't have that much influence, but he was an abolitionist as well. So these were the two main characters behind, or two main people behind the formation of this college, um, Dr. Bethune and Reverend Cookman. Okay, so 1922, let's move on. The first facsimile photo sent over telephone lines in Washington, D.C. on this day. So the fax machine essentially um, was used for the first time. So that was 98 years ago. The year is 1935, and I did talk about this yesterday. I talked about um, Ethiopia being invaded. So it was on this day that the invasion actually took place. So yesterday, the um, Ethiopian emperor um, got his troops together when he heard that um, Italian soldiers were approaching to, you know, basically cause trouble with his country, overrun his country, and um, start a new a new Roman Empire. Okay, so his name is Emilio de Bono. The year was 1935, and it was on this day, October 3rd, that Italian forces, led by him, under orders from Benito Mussolini, invaded Abyssinia. So it was called Abyssinia at the time, uh, today known as Ethiopia, in hopes of building a new Roman Empire. Emilio de Bono was born on the 19th of March 1866 and died on the 11th of January 1944, was an Italian general, fascist activist, marshal, and member of the fascist Grand Council, Gran Consiglio del Fascismo, in Italian. De Bono fought in the Italo-Turkish War, World War I, and the Second Italo-Abyssinian War. De Bono was born in Cassano d'Arda, son of Giovanni de Bono, descendant of the Counts of Balassina and Elisa Bazi. His family suffered under the Austrian yoke. He entered the Italian Royal Army, Regio Esse Quito, in 1884 as a second lieutenant and had worked his way up to general staff by the start of the Italo-Turkish War. So Italy was a war with basically everyone around them. Um, so this Italo-Turkish War took place in 1911. De Bono would later go on to fight World War I, where he distinguished himself against the Austrians in Gorizia in 1916 and Monte Grappa in October 1918. In 1920, he was discharged with the rank of Major General. So this was the guy who led Italy to war against Ethiopia, in summary. That happened on this day in 1935. He was eventually defeated by the British, and um, like I said yesterday in my Today in History show, um, the Ethiopian emperor, who was in exile in the United Kingdom, came back to his country and uh, tried to sort things out, you know. Okay, so 1945, let's move on. And um, you can see a recognizable face there, maybe, maybe not, but this face here um, is that of Elvis Presley, a very young Elvis Presley on this day, 1945. He comes fifth in a talent show. Um, this is when he made his first public appearance as a singer on this day. It did not go well, obviously. Um, but he was only 10 years old. So um, so this was this is history. Um, the fact that he came fifth in this talent show, um, where are the other guys today? All the other people who um, performed better than him, all the four people, were never heard of again, presumably. I may be wrong, but I, I bet you that they were never heard of again. Elvis became a star you know, because he persevered. He persevered and he had talent, obviously. So I think that's a lesson to us as well. You know, don't give up easily, um, especially if you know you have a God instinct that this is what you're good at. You're working hard, you have a talent, and you work hard. You know, there are people who don't have talent and yet work hard and still succeed in life. Some of them achieve an astounding success just because they've worked hard. Okay, so um, yeah, that's a bit of a lesson for 
for us, for me as well, you know, not to self, as they say, um, keep on keeping on. Um, and you got there in the end. 1954, Al Sharpton was born. He's an American civil rights activist, he's a Baptist minister, talk show host, and politician. Sharpton is the founder of the National Action Network. In 2004, he was a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the U.S. presidential election. He hosts his own radio talk show, Keeping It Real, and he makes regular guest appearances on cable news television. In 2011, he was named the host of MSNBC's Politics Nation, a nightly talk show. In 2015, the program was shifted to Sunday morning. So that's Al Sharpton, who celebrates his birthday today. Happy birthday, Reverend Al Sharpton, politician, talk show host, Baptist minister, civil rights activist, founder of the National Action Network. So happy birthday, Al Sharpton is 66 today. Let's move on to this lady, Gwen Stefani. Full name, Gwen Renee Stefani. She is an American singer, songwriter, record producer, and fashion designer. She is a co-founder and lead vocalist of the band No Doubt, whose singles include Just a Girl, Spiderwebs, and Don't Speak, I think. I don't know, I might be wrong. From the 1995 breakthrough studio album, Tragic Kingdom, as well as Hey Baby and It's My Life from later album. So that's Gwen Stefani, who was born on this day. She is 51 today. How time flies. Gwen Stefani, happy birthday to you. 1990, Germany was reunified on this day. So after four decades of Cold War division and with pressure from the German Chancellor, Helmut Kohl, Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev agreed to a unified Germany within NATO, um, leading to Germany's reunification on this day. And the year was again 1990. So this is a picture, this picture says that um, October 3 marks the anniversary of Germany's unification, celebrated as German Unity Day. In German, it's tagged the Deutsche Einheit, a day for unity. The two parts, Federal Republic of Germany, the West, and the Democratic Republic of Germany, the East. The country was unified after 45 years of the post-war split. Unified less than a year after the Berlin Wall fell on November 9th, 1989. Two months later, Helmut Kohl was elected the first chancellor of reunified Germany. West Germany paid 1.3 six trillion euros wow to rebuild the east and the total cost of german reunification was two trillion euros so obviously west germany was a much wealthier part the much bigger part as well um so anyway that's history for you 1990 on this day germany was reunified on that note guys i'm gonna bring back the blinds close the curtain on today's today in history Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Do not forget to subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the notification bell so that you receive updates of my video uploads. My name, again, is Sotonye Afiasimama. Thank you for dropping by, and I shall see you tomorrow, August, August, October 4th, another edition of Today in History. Stay safe. Bye-bye.